This channel is about doing things that are not documented in the uh, in the manual, and here I have on my uh, on my '69 Mark III Spitfire, I am uh, installing an accessory relay, and uh, and I'll, I'll show you the wiring diagram and so on for it. But where I decided to install it, here's a piece of aluminum bar stock, and I installed it to, uh, onto the mount screws where the uh, where the um, glove box goes. So uh, as you can see, I, I, I've got a relay here. I've got my fuse box here. I'll tell you where I got these in a minute. And I'm just going to show you that, uh, that it's, it is not hot. Now, I'm going to uh, come up here, turn the key on, and now it should be hot uh, here. And there's the light, yeah. So you, as you can see, there's one fuse in it here, and uh, it's hot here where the fuse is. Uh, not, not hot there. So I'll go through how I wired this. Uh, the one piece that's kind of interesting is the on the back I don't know if you can see it there on the back of the uh, right there on the back of the speedometer there's the speedometer on the back of the speedometer there's the in for the uh, voltage stabilizer right here and I put a GAN connector there to connect the relay to uh, so we'll look at that. Um, we'll look at that a little bit more later. Uh, these screws here are where the uh, additional connections go to. So I have four circuits I can take off of this. And I have the reason I did this is I'm installing an air fuel ratio gauge and some other things, and I needed more takeoffs. And I've always wanted to install one of these, including a USB charger. So I finally decided, okay, I'll just go ahead and install it. And uh, there it is with the cover on it. Uh, one of the reasons I bought the one I did was I liked that cover and the it, it, it covering everything up. The parts I bought had more to do with availability than anything else. Um, I got this at West Marine, uh, this compact fuse block. And let's see if I have the receipt for it here somewhere. It was... Uh, uh, $31 for that. I like the 30, I like this one because of that plastic cover. I probably could have got a cheaper one, but I didn't like any of the ones I had locally available. I didn't want to wait to order it online. And then I bought this one at Santa Cruz Auto Parts. This is the relay RAA1511. And that price was, um, $16.99. The fuse holder I bought was also bought at West Marine, uh, part 5063, heavy duty inline. I got a 30 amp because that's what the, uh, that was what the rating on the uh, relay was. So I got a 30 amp fuse holder for it. So here's the circuit diagram that I came up with, and I'll just walk you through it. It's for my uh, my uh, 69 Triumph Spitfire, and I have battery battery to ground, so I'll just follow the current. Battery comes in. I put, took it off one of these side um, spade connectors off the off the starter solenoid to get my positive, and positive comes in, goes through a fuse holder, and then it goes to the uh, 87 terminal of the back of the relay. I got this wiring diagram off of the internet. It didn't come with one. If you do a search on on uh, four or five spade relay, terminal relay on the internet, you'll find that these there's these numbers on the bottom of the relay and it tells you where to put them. 85 goes to ground. I put that under the screw head of one of the, uh, the, uh, the glove box attachment ones. Then the then 30 is a short red 10 gauge wire and this is 10 gauge wire all the way through here. 10 gauge wire will handle 30 amps and this is a 30 amp relay. 
So I put 10 gauge wire through the power circuit. So here it comes, it comes down and this connects onto, and you'll see, and there's a, uh, a screw that you, uh, you put a, uh, a connection to, and this goes onto the, onto the fuse box part. Now I took, as far as what activates the relay, uh, going onto the 86 terminal, I took a red 14 gauge wire and brought it up and I put it onto a gang connector on the uh, on the voltage regulator there's a I, I bought an extra uh, gang con piggyback connector and I'll show you that in a minute uh, under the voltage um, stabilizer on the back of the speedometer and then that goes through that gets activated of course by the ignition switch the the uh, uh, the ignition switch so the ignition switch goes on sends current that does not go through the stabilizer the t 10 volts comes out over here it just stays, it just piggybacks off of the 12 volts and then goes through here to this terminal. So uh, I hope that was helpful and I'll show you those connections in the car. So here's the starter solenoid and if you'll notice I put a spade connector, there's a, there's a spade that came out the side of this terminal where the, where the hot comes from the battery. This goes back to the positive on the battery. So uh, there's a spade connector that comes out, I connected to there, I rooted it down under the wire clips, under the wire clips, under the wire clips, all the way over to where the fuse box is, and I ran it in alongside the main line of the fuse box. And just on the other side of this, you can see that I put a, put a fuse in the circuit, and that fuse comes down into the, and it connects with the spade connector into the relay. Um, so here's the ground I talked about that connects onto the side. This goes up and into the, into the relay. And then uh, we've got the, the power out of the relay and it comes down and connects onto this, onto the, uh, we'll take the plastic off. I can do it one-handed without breaking it. There we go. Comes off and connects onto that onto that bolt there. And then uh, up here, let's see if I can pull it off while I'm sitting here. Okay, I lost you there. Here, let's see if I can pull it off. You'll see there's a this gang connector on here that uh, that I put in, and I'll, I'll find that that part number and uh, get it to you. A little hard, it's out of focus, but you can see that clip saw is a, is a dual connector. And I've got two of them actually piggyback because I also have my tachometer wired there. But you can see these gang this gang connector just act as creates the ability to add more circuits in there. Get that back on. Go up, go back on. There we go. Okay, here's the part number with the double male female adapter. Uh, see if I can find the part number on it. There we go. And uh, it looks like that. And what you can do is slide that onto the tab of the voltage stabilizer and it gives you two out. So that's all that is. Uh, here's the flat bar aluminum. I think I got this from Home Depot. I don't know. Uh, that's the, uh, that I used to mount it. And I simply measured the two, the two screws for the... Um, for the back of the um, glove box mount, and then there's two screws, two further screws, for to mount the fuse box, and then one more, one more screw to mount the uh, the relay. Those are all just done in with machine screws. Uh, you don't want to try to tap this aluminum because with fine thread because it won't hold, and I didn't have a coarse thread, the, the right coarse thread, so I just use machine screws. It should be fine.
Well, if this uh, was helpful to you and uh, you like, uh, you learned something from it, um, uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd like the video, subscribe, or make a comment. Uh, thank you for watching.